and I would like to welcome you all here to the July Inner Source Commons community call. And just for everyone to know that the community call is the place where we all come together as a community to have um, great presentations from great presenters uh, with real life experiences, but also to have uh, chats in a safe space afterwards uh, where we can have a discussion about these topics. And that was part of the feedback we got from earlier summits was that we need more opportunities to have conversations about the challenges and opportunities around Inner Source. So we're delighted to have these um, going on every month. Um, and just to give you an idea about what's happening today, We'll spend about the first half of the call uh, hearing a great presentation from Guilherme and Michael um, talking about discoverability and just to share that their presentation and their the SAP, uh, the SAP Inner Source port project portal has been incredibly uh, useful tool that many of our community are actually using um, today. So we're, we're delighted to have them here to give us an update about how SAP are using that and how they, they actually approach discoverability. So we're delighted to have them here. The first part of the call is, in fact, the entire call will be recorded, but the first part of the call will be made available after uh, the fact on YouTube, which is fantastic as well. The second part of the call where we have our discussion uh, will be recorded so that we can actually uh, take away the takeaways afterwards and, and capture those, um, but it will not be shared. And that will be uh, held under Chatham House rules, which means that you can share what you learn there, but not the who said it or from what organization they came from. So it's a, it's a safe space to discuss uh, the issues at hand, um, uh, but we, we hope that you, you uh, respect that Chatham House rule as part of that discussion. But without further ado, I'm delighted to hand it over to Guilherme to, uh, to take it away for the first part of the conversation. Um, and I will ask people to go on mute if you're not presenting for this part of the call. Uh, and, uh, and we will invite you to come and join the conversation after both presentations. So thank you and take it away Guilherme. Okay, I started sharing my screen. Please let let me know when it's visible. We can see it. Okay, perfect. We can yep. start then. Uh, so thank you. Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, Michael and I, we are going to present today about inner source and discoverability as announced by Claire with uh, a focus on the project portal that we implemented at SAP and that we made uh, open source, I think, on last year. And at the end, we want to just give a little bit of insight on what we are planning next with respect to discoverability and inner source at SAP. Before we dive into the topic, just a brief introduction about ourselves. So Michael, you can introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Michael. I'm working in a department called SAP Sports and Entertainment. And I'm a, I'm a developer I'm focusing mostly on UI development. But I was um, yeah, always focusing on um, sharing knowledge and collaboration. So I created a lot of internal inner source projects and also some of SAP's uh, open source projects. And I'm really happy to, to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. And I am Guilherme de Lagustin. I work uh, on globalization services, more specifically the human capital management area, where I am a development expert, and I focus on payroll localization. You can see that Michael and I, we both work under globalization services, but that's not how we met each other. That's not why we are together presenting here today. Actually, inside SAP, we are both part of an internal inner source working group. So that's how we met each other, and that's uh, why we are we are why we are presenting together today. So I want to start the talk by asking the question: What is discoverability? Not necessarily in the context of inner source, but in general. I didn't uh, bring my own definition here. I took the one that I found on Wikipedia. So it says there that discoverability is the degree to which something, especially a piece of content or information, can be found in a search of a file, database, or other information system. Now, how do we translate that to inner source? What does discoverability mean in the context of inner source? So we don't have a 
clear definition for that. So I brought then my own definition. And based on the, defi the general definition, my own definition for discoverability in inner source is the degree to which inner source projects and contribution opportunities can be found. So imagine that your company was touched by the magic fairy of inner source. All of a sudden, all the managers support inner source. Everybody knows what it is, and they are eager to contribute to other projects. Uh, what do they do next? So they need to know where to find these projects and where to find these contribution opportunities. And that's where discoverability comes into place, is how do you solve these problems? How do you answer these questions? Where to find projects? Where to find opportunities? Now, there is something that I want to keep in mind here, that I want to stress a little bit, because I think that there is a little bit of confusion on the topic, that inner source is not reused. And that's relevant for discoverability. Of course, they have a lot in common. Actually, the overlap that you see in the picture is uh, small if I compare to the actual overlap between inner source and reuse. Reusable components, they are like great candidates to use the inner source methodology because people that reuse these components, they are potential contributors. But what we need to keep in mind is that the use cases, they are a bit different. Somebody looking for inner source projects may not ne be necessarily looking for reuse projects. Somebody may be looking for inner source for personal development to find something to learn about a technology. While people looking for reuse components, they may not be necessarily interested in projects that are inner source. They may be just looking for reuse. And so when you do your when you plan your activities when you do your tooling you have to keep these two things in mind you have to think about the inner source use cases you have to think about the reuse use cases and try to either cover them with different tools or have a shared tool that covers both of them but keep them in mind don't think that by covering one you are covering automatically the other without having this separation in mind now that we cleared that important point I want to talk about patterns. So if you are not familiar with patterns, this is one of the nice contributions from inner source commons to the inner source community. They collect and organize and curate these patterns and the patterns are basically common solutions to common problems in the inner source realm. If you want to know more about them, you can go to the Inner Source Commons website and under the learn section, you will find a link that leads to a page that is formatted as a digital book. And you have more information about patterns in general and about each specific pattern. And there is three specific patterns on all this collection that are more related to discoverability. One of them is the gig marketplace. It consists on building an internal website where the owners or the maintainers of inner source components can uh, promote the contribution opportunities. And also people looking for the opportunities can go there and search. So it's a, it's a way for the owners to find potential contributors or and basically to find resources. If you have something where help is wanted, you can use this geek marketplace. And that's what this pattern is. We also apply this at SAP, but it's not the focus of our talk today. We have then the inner source portal, which is the focus of our talk today. And that consists on having an internal website where you can index all the projects that are inner source in your company. So this is great because then if somebody is looking for projects, not necessarily only contribution opportunities, you have in one place all the list of projects. And the third one, the repository activity score is very much related to the inner source portal. Imagine that you have all these projects, how do you rank them? You could simply rank them by number of forks, number of stars, but does it reflect the ones where you have a bigger community, where it's easier to contribute, where you have more activity? Not necessarily. So this pattern is about coming with a metric based on KPIs and that may be specific to your company or tailored to your company that, well, it will uh, maximize the, the, the contributions. I like think what you want to show to people first. This, in this pattern, if you want to have a standard metric, you can go there and you have a sample on how you can use one metric. It's the one we use and the formula is there if you want to use it. 
now that we covered patterns, I want to talk a little bit about discoverability and the inner source culture. Uh, there is one thing that is important, that is discoverability alone will not create an inner source culture. It's not that magic fairy that I mentioned before. If you introduce the patterns, you apply the three of them, it's likely that they will only be known and reachable by your already existing inner source community. It may be only available, uh, well, it's reachable from outside the bubble, but maybe it's not known. Now, the fact is, it is a good tool for growing the inner source culture. So you can go to the rest of the company, your community can advertise the inner source methodology, the community itself, and you don't go empty handed. You can go and say, hey, look what we have here. We have a portal. Uh, do you know what inner source is? We have a lot of projects. Come look here. And it's a good tool to help attract people into the inner source community. OK, now I'd like to hand over to Michael, and he's going to talk a little bit more about our portal. Yeah, thanks, Gidea. Let me just switch to my presentation here, to my part. So it should be coming up any second. Is it already uh, visible? The page? Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Yeah, so uh, let's talk a little bit more detail about our portal and why we actually created this at SAP. Um, and I think every company of a, of a certain size has probably similar things uh, happening. So we have so many different technologies and, and tools and development platforms at SAP that it's really hard to, to have an overview on what's going on. And each of these uh, platforms, for example, GitHub has its own search where you can search for certain repository types and so on, but uh, you don't have the central place to find the projects. Um, and that's why we thought this pattern uh, is really helpful, the project portal. But uh, we, we were aware that other companies did do something like this, but there was no um, public like um, version of it or no template that we could use. So we just started as an inner source project, also a fun side fact, uh, to create this portal for SAP. And later on, we open sourced it so that everybody can use it. And just in case you want to have a look in parallel to this uh, presentation, it's under the SAP namespace in GitHub called Project Portal for Inner Source. And it's basically a yeah, very simple web app, loading a JSON file of data and displaying it. And we have also um, deployed it to GitHub pages so that you can just try it right away without um, installing it. And it comes with some mock data showing planets and asteroids. So just that you can um, see how it works. And you can search basically for filters um, for projects. And you can filter them by programming language. And how we get your data into it, I will uh, show you in a couple of minutes. Um, now, this is the open source version. Uh, the SAP internal version looks pretty similar and it addresses these challenges really nicely because we have all the repositories from all the different um, places and, and technologies listed here. And as you can see, we have also ranked them by the score that Guillaume has mentioned before. So we calculate some activity based on um, like how old is the repository, how many commits do, do we have, how many contributors. And we also show these here on the detail page, um, like the GitHub personal uh, commit history, so that you can really see for each project, how active is it, how many commits did it get in the last uh, month or weeks, and you can decide which one you would like to contribute to. Um, it's also dynamically changing because the score is calculated every day. So it could be that if you go to the portal tomorrow, it will be a different order of the projects, uh, which is also interesting, I think, for uh, the inner source community. And it's always showing a different picture, basically. So uh, that's the portal and uh, how we run it. So basically, it's the same code base as the external one. We just published it, I think. Um, somewhere earlier this year or end of, end of last year. And it's there for you to use. And I'm really happy that many people took the opportunity to contribute and to make uh, use of it already. So that's really cool. 
Um, yeah, so technically it's uh, an asset to, it's basically just a web page to show the projects and some details about the projects, but how do the projects get in there? And we thought it should be super simple to get the projects in there. No complicated process, no pull requests, no whatever. Um, the only thing that you need to do in GitHub, for example, is just set the topic inner source and it will be indexed right away and shown in the portal. Now, as you can see here, we have a technical repository called UI5Docs. It's a documentation for one of our open source projects. And if you would like to override this technical title to a more readable one, as you can see here, we allow the people to put a JSON file in the root of their repository, and this will be uh, indexed as well. And this is then how the tile for the project would look like. So you can see here, it's not the technical name from GitHub, but it's this title from the metadata. And that's pretty much it. Everything else comes from the GitHub API. The score I will talk about in a minute some more is calculated automatically and the programming language is also coming from GitHub. So for the project, it's like a two minute task, adding the topic and optionally adding this file. And then it will be shown um, when the, the crawler, the, the instance that checks these repositories is running the next time. So very simple, and I think that's uh, key to the success that it's very simple to list your projects here. Um, and this is the, the big picture. Basically, this is the open source project on the right. Uh, it consumes the static JSON file in the repository, and we have a crawler script creating this static JSON file every day, basically. And the way we run it is we have several internal GitHub instances and some Git Garrett projects also. And we could even add some more uh, technical tools if there's other landscapes. Um, and it creates this one JSON file. And it also calculates the score. Um, it's run daily. Uh, we thought it's enough to, to run it on a daily basis. And then you need to wait maximum one day to see your project in here. All right, um, some more words about this activity score. It's actually a side project of this portal that we have uh, published. So I actually asked myself, what is the good ranking for the projects? As Gia mentioned before, like there's no one KPI, but there might be a set of KPIs that define good ranking. And we have also published this as a pattern uh, while we created the portal. And there's some ideas and pseudo code in there if you want to um, yeah, create your own score and uh, rank the projects. It's not really necessary. You can also rank them just by name or by by um, Fox or stars, for example. That would be even simpler. Yeah, and now let's run it together. I just want to show you a, a quick demo of this portal. And what I did beforehand, because it always takes a little bit of time, is I forked the repository, the one I've shown you before. I did npm install, and if I now do npm start, um, it should run a very simple web server on my local machine here. Takes a couple of seconds for that. And what I want to show you now when it's showing the page is, okay. <laughs> It's already running, it's fine too. I think it should be here. There we go. So that's the local uh, project with uh, mock data. And what I want to do now is implement a very, very simple crawler. And we also have documentation for this here in the repository. Here under crawling documentation, you can also see the picture from my presentation to explain how it works. And basically it's described how to create this uh, JSON file um, that, we, with, that we use for displaying the projects. And the details of implementing everything are coming up here. But what we came up with is a very simple curl call uh, where you can just call something by repository, organization, or topic. And that's what I want to show you today because it's very uh, simple and straightforward. And the only thing you need to do here is create a GitHub token um, with access to the repo functionality. Read only is fine. And then 
you basically run this here in the project folder. And now let's query the inner source comments repositories and display them in the portal. That's just a one liner. I just add the organization inner source comments here. And if I reload the page, hopefully, okay, that's the wrong one. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully we should see all the inner source uh, repositories. Of course, there's no statistics yet because that would be an, another API call, but at least like the very basic functionality displaying all your projects on GitHub internally or externally uh, can be handled as simple as this. Now, what would be even more interesting is all public repositories um, using the topic inner source on GitHub. And this is also a one-liner um, that we can use here. And then we should be able to see all public projects on GitHub that have somehow tagged their repositories with inner source. And, ah, okay, wrong file. <laughs> Just bear with me. There we go. So now we do not only have this, this project portal, but we have projects from other companies, from the US government and other places across the internet. And I can see that the inner source repositories are actually not tagged with inner source. So that's maybe a follow-up <laughs> for us. Um, but you can see some people uh, tag their repositories publicly with inner source. And we could even extend this because there's not only people who tagged it with inner minus source, but also with inner source written together. And now you can see that at some point in time, we need somehow a script that puts this together. And this is where I would like to show you one final example here, doing two curl calls, putting it together in one JSON file and displaying it here again. And then we can see actually all public uh, inner source projects in the portal here coming together. And the only thing that our crawler does on top is calculate the score, get the um, participation stats and so on, just to display more uh, data here. So now let's see. So it's now a total of 54 projects shown here. And as you can see, it comes from different um, places uh, on GitHub. So just to let you know how simple it is to use this project, there's also a different view if you like this uh, this view more. Um, and yeah, it's very simple to set something up like this. Um, if you want to have a more sophisticated crawler, then we have, as I said, the instructions here um, telling you how to um, formulate a query to the GitHub API using a topic and also how to uh, query the participation stats or how to calculate the score here. And uh, there's very interesting contributions here from Sebastian Speer, which is also part of the inner source community and Zach Coppert from GitHub. They have already two um, public implementations of the crawler with all these details above. So you can either start with the very simple one that I've just shown or with one of these two and you should be um, very quick to set up your own portal. And yeah, one final thing to say, this uh, project portal was really a team of effort. So we started as an inner source project. Some people at SAP contributed, made it more, um, more interesting um, and uh, more sophisticated. Then we published it and got some feedback from, from you guys, from the community and some people from inner source, uh, for example, Sebastian helped to tweak it a little bit. And now we have this version and we're really open for contributions. If you have good ideas, want to extend it, then um, you're welcome to create a pull request. And of course, you're welcome to just, just use it as it is. That's uh, fine, of course, too. So that's it for uh, my part in the demo. Um, we'll give back to Guillaume now and yeah, to show some next steps that we have planned. Thank you, Michael. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. 
so now I'd like to continue the presentation. Um, to close it, I'll talk a little bit about what's next for discoverability with the context of inner source at SAP. So first of all, we would like to add some analytics to our inner source content. We have an internal inner source page with material related to the topic and also the portal that Michael just presented, but we don't have analytics on it. We currently don't know how it's being used. We know it's being used at least from the provider side because there is a lot of projects uh, that are listed there. So I know that people are publishing their, their projects, but we don't have a very good insight on the consuming side. So that's something that we want to have in the near future. We also are growing a community of practices internally at SAP. Now a little bit more proactively, we are having community calls internally and, and having discussions across projects. And I think that this is not so much connected to, with discoverability, but it touches it a little bit because in this community, if you have potential contributors or, or frequent contributors, they might discover new projects. And the uh, people that are maintaining projects, they might discover each other and then learn from each other, which is also a case for discoverability. We also would like to feature our inner source projects in one of our development portals. Uh, there is a new portal that is being developed internally. It's not mainly aiming at inner source. It's a generic development portal, but we want inner source to be represented there. And we have a very good relationship with the people that are working on this topic. And they are also supporters of inner source and they want to have it inner source there from the get go. So we are making sure that the inner source requirements are also being represented in this development portal and discoverability is one of them. Also, we would like to present some more contextual information for the inner source projects when they are shown in our internal um, corporate search. The, the screenshot you see here is of course not related to that. It's, uh, it was just searching for weather. It's just to exemplify that sometimes when you search in the, our commercial search engines, they will show you some contextual information and that's something that we also want to have. Uh, maybe we will tackle there also the reuse discoverability that's still in discussion, but we would like the projects to show there more information, maybe a con link to the contribution guidelines or already you can open a feature request from there. So that's something that we are discussing and we think that will play uh, a big role in discoverability also of inner source. And for our portal, not the only related to the one we use internally, but this is more for the open source version. We want to make it more configurable. So you have seen the demo from Michael. Currently, the way to reuse it is by forking and then uh, changing the repos um, file. And then this, if you want to do any customization on the portal, you would have to modify it. So what we are thinking about doing in the near future is to make it more configurable, maybe a packaged reusable thing that you install when you configure in some means and then you run it, it will either generate it for you, something like that, but that you can use it and customize it without modification. So no need for forking unless you really want to contribute back to the, to the portal. With that, I close our talk. I would like to thank you for being here and you can reach us directly by email or preferably in the inner source community so that everybody can engage. And that's it. I'll give it back to you, Claire. Thank you so much, Guilherme and Michael. That was a, that was a fantastic presentation. Um, and I will take this opportunity to say to those of you who are viewing us online after the fact, um, goodbye. And remember that you, now that's not, everyone else stay please. But, but for those of you who are visiting online, uh, this is the end of our recorded part of the presentation because now we're going to into a discussion that will be under Chatham House rules. But if you do want to find out what's next on the Inner Source Commons community calls, please do uh, visit Inner Source Commons dot org and check out the events page.